Almost game day once again for the Duke Blue Devils. They're set to get back in action tomorrow. A Saturday matchup coming up for Duke from inside Cameron Indoor Stadium. They get set to host Virginia Tech. Revenge is on Duke's mind after losing to the Hokies back in Blacksburg a few weeks ago. We're discussing all of that and more on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. It's time for us to rock and roll. Let's get right to it. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Lockdown Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. So great to have you here with us on this Friday, February 24th, 2023. Super exciting episode coming up here today on Lockdown Blue Devils, talking about Duke's game tomorrow against Virginia Tech. Really thrilled to have my good pal Josh Smith from the Devil's Den podcast. He's going to join us on the program here today. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to follow and subscribe to our podcast for free, wherever you get your podcast, available each and every day. Leave us a five-star rating and written review on the Apple Podcast platform and watch our show each and every day on YouTube as well. Press that subscribe button. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils, and I'm on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Without further ado, let me bring on my good pal, as I said, Josh Smith from the Devil's Den podcast, who joins us here on the show. Josh, great to see you once again. Thanks for coming back on the program. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. Hope you're doing well. I am doing very well. Uh, excited to talk about our Dukies, who are now on a three-game winning streak uh, after a tough loss in Charlottesville against Virginia. The no call at the end of the game with Filipowski. This team's totally flipped the switch. Everybody is healthy. And, uh, man, it's been fun to watch Duke as of late. Yeah, you know, we, we can talk a little bit about that, but Virginia has not been kind to, <laughs> to Duke this year. I mean, to get the throat punch from Virginia Tech, then you get the no uh, – you can't call it a no Good call. Point. I mean, <laughs> yeah. no call would have been fine, I think, With but once you call it and you reverse it, that kind of got a lot of us been out of shape. But, you know, we're, we're back on track, and, uh, man, three games left. I didn't put the Virginia connection together, right? That it's just been that state that yep. uh, has kind of caused some trouble uh, for Duke. So hopefully that trend changes tomorrow uh, when Duke gets set to take on Virginia Tech. Of course, that game uh, that they lost against the Hokies was one of those Monday night games, quick turnaround, uh, it, it just was not a good formula for success for Duke in that one. Yeah, yep. coming off the big win against Miami at home, right? You turn around. And that's been a trend for us. You know, I was at the Duke Carolina game and I was telling Shu when we were leaving, I was, I don't even care if we lose to Miami. You know, it's just that short turnaround. It's something that we've been doing. Um, you know, hopefully we can, we can get some momentum. It's go time. We're starting to play some of our best ball. So, you know, it's a good time to tune in. No kidding. Let's see what Duke is able to do uh, against the Hokies here. Really good play as of late from the bigs. I think that's going to be a point of emphasis because you look at that Virginia Tech game, the first matchup around Grant Baselli, the five-man in the middle for Virginia Tech, had his way, had his day, so to speak. And, and Lively's play as of late, Flip's play, Ryan Young, the interior, I think is going to be crucial for Duke in this matchup. For sure. And we've seen that kind of trend recently where we're getting a lot of production from the front court. You know, Derek seems to have found himself, um, looks just more comfortable out there. He's, he's not fouling, which has been huge. He's able to play 25, 28 minutes and the results are speaking for themselves. We see the type of impact he's able to have. So, you know, Flip's been Flip. He's been Mr. Kind of rock solid and steady for us. You know, I think he had 29, almost a 30 piece last time up there. So, you know, it'd be nice to get a, a similar performance. You're getting Dorit coming back. Mark Mitchell has continued to play really well. Um, you know, the guards, I mean, we're really just starting to click. It looks Absolutely. Like, you know, I know we're unranked, but it seems that we're pushing, knocking on that door. Yeah, no, I, I love what's happening right now with the Stoop team in particular. And it's really been Derek Lively who's been able to assert himself there in the middle, played incredibly well as of late on the defensive end 
in particular. Who does Lively remind you of? Is, is there anybody that's becoming to mind lately the more you've been watching him? I can't quite figure it out. Yeah, there's not a great comp. You know, he got a lot of Tyson Chandler comps early on. I Interesting. See a, okay. I see a little bit of that. You, you could look at a Jackson Hayes guy from a few years ago, got drafted by the Pelicans. You know, Jericho Sims up in at New York Knicks. You know, he was a second round guy. Uh, maybe a guy like a Jared Allen a little bit projects that, you know, he's kind of tall, he's lanky. Um, but what I think is, is separates Derek a little bit, and it really hasn't gotten talked about a whole lot, is his passing ability. Mm-hmm. Um, now, maybe you could argue that on some of those, you'd like to see him kind of maybe try to go back up and finish that. But he's had some really nice passes. Thinking against Syracuse, um, you know, even against Louisville, that vision that he has, he's even taking some threes. He's not making a ton yet, but just his willingness to take them, I think that really projects well from him. You can see what he could be as a rim running, you know, rim protecting big, especially at the next level with that. Yeah. I really like the point Connor O'Neill from Devils Illustrated made a little bit earlier in the week on the program, talking about uh, also just the physical tools in play for Derek Lively the second, the catch radius, right? That's something that we hear so frequently in football, but there have been some lobs as of late where it's like, how in the world, Josh, did Derek come down with that one? And he was able to slam it home and make plays like that. A good catch radius on him. Yeah, that, that still <laughs> shot from the Syracuse, like the last bucket Whew, of the game. Yeah. I didn't notice it in real time, but that you look, and he's way back there where he catches that thing. I mean, we should probably use that more often. <laughs> no yeah. kidding. We absolutely should. Uh, Duke basketball getting set to take on Virginia Tech. The front court is going to be crucial but the backcourt will have to play a hand as well as they do each and every timeout. Let's talk a little bit more about Jeremy Roach and company after our first timeout here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Locked On Blue Devils is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. The NBA season is back. It's kind of weird. A long week off without the NBA in our lives with All-Star Week taking place. And that's why now is the perfect time for you to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book that has everything you could ever imagine in regards to the National Basketball Association. They've got the new customer, no sweat first bet, up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use, and you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores, three-point shots drained, everything in mind there. So don't miss your chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Moving forward here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils, J.J. Jackson alongside my pal Josh Smith talking about uh, the NBA resuming the second half of their season. We just saw All-Star Weekend uh, last weekend with Jason Tatum winning All-Star Game MVP honors. So many Blue Devils still doing their thing at the next level, Josh. And some that were there that we didn't even get to see. You know, I was yeah. really hoping Zion was going to sure. be back by then. Um you know, it's the way it goes, but we're we're starting to really put a lot of talent in the league. A lot of that young talent starting to blossom. Um, you know, it's it's wild. As a kid, that was not really the the kind of narrative for Duke. I think all, all, most of us are pretty you know self aware of that. Right. And it's completely flipped. Uh, it's exciting to watch, especially a guy like Tatum. I mean, you just seeing him become. You know, an MVP seems to be in his future, not just of the All Star Game Finals MVP, regular season MVP. He, he's doing things now at a level right. that's just remarkable. I mean, yeah. just so much growth from him. I mean, just unguardable. Really. It's like when you excel at that level, you turn into, you know, people throw out the best basketball player in the world talk. You know, like if you're the NBA, the MVP of the highest honor of the highest league that there is, and Tatum's name is in that conversation and to know the Duke ties there. I mean, it's just wild to see the ascension that he's been on as of late. And Zion, if he stays healthy, you're talking Duke's going to have two of the top five or six kind of younger guys as the face of the league right there with, you know, got Luca, John Morant. I mean, these guys are going to be in that conversation. Um, You know, Zion's already doing that. He's just got to stay on the floor. Let's not forget Paulo Bancaro on his yeah. way to uh, likely winning NBA Rookie of the Year honors, uh, which is super exciting for him. And, of course, all those um, thoughts and deals are online with our friends over at FanDuel. All right, so let's keep moving forward. Let's talk about this Duke team ahead of um, tomorrow's game against Virginia Tech. And, and, Josh, you take a look at Duke. 
We take a look at what's next following these last three games of the regular season. You've got the ACC tournament coming up, and then, of course, the NCAA tournament taking place. It would be so ideal if Duke could find themselves in a position to get that double bye in the ACC tournament. They've got some work left to do, though, to make that happen. Yeah, they need probably a little bit of help to, you know, it really be not. Clemson has kind of faltered a little bit. I think they just blew out Syracuse, but they've been a little up and down after since they started so hot. Um, you know, I think them and State play each other. So I think ideally we need State to beat Clemson and then us to beat State, and maybe we give ourselves a chance. Uh, it'd be nice. I think we might have to go 3-0, and which is going to be kind of tough. Um undefeated at home so hopefully that plays and then give ourselves a shot at the sweep you know that's all you can ask for yeah the fact that you get a chance to play North Carolina on the road this time but did get that win of course inside Cameron Indoor Stadium the Tar Heels right now we're in danger of missing the NCAA tournament uh, which has never happened before when a preseason AP number one team uh, did not make the big dance that would be crazy if that were to be the case but that's still work left to be done for Duke and it starts with a couple of home games before we even get there. What's it been like for you, Josh? Because as you, I mean, we're lifelong Duke basketball fans, and all of a sudden, Cameron Indoor feels to uh, to, to be quite special uh, again, and, and it's been a dominant place for Duke to play this season. What's yeah. it been like? You know, I don't know if it's just like a pandemic maybe related thing of, you know, the last few years have just kind of kept everyone so dormant and the energy's back. I don't know if it's it's probably a combination, but you get John coming in as a first year coach and that brings some excitement. It brings some newness. Um, You know, maybe things had gotten kind of taken for granted a little bit under K the expectation was just so high every year. So for me, it's just kind of been refreshing. There's kind of a long-term view. Each loss doesn't feel like a catastrophic kind of with K it got like that for (laughs) me with these recruiting classes, you know, you just had a six month window every year and it just felt like you just rode these waves. Um, And now it's like, I'm getting to watch the coach develop like these next three or four years. Shire is probably going to develop more and change and grow more there than he will the next 20, right? They're just so pivotal. Um, So that's, what's been really exciting for me is to see that. And I think, the season speaks for that. We've seen some really good stuff that we're trying to run. Um, so I think the system is in play and now we'll see kind of what, what it looks like year to year. 20 and eight overall record, 11 and six in the conference, 14 and zero at home. Duke and Miami right now are the only two teams in the league that have yet to lose a home game. What do you think has been the biggest bugaboo on the road in these games for Duke? Because, you know, you think about, Neutral site matchups coming up as well for the Blue Devils uh, in their future, where they're three and two so far this season. Once you get into tournament play, what's that? What's been the biggest difference in your eyes? I, I think it's just, and you know, Jeff Cable's talked about this a little bit. We talked about it last night um, on our pod, and it's just this idea of the league got devalued early in the preseason, and there's so yeah. many conference games that you can't really, if you go into the conference with like an expectation or a perception of being good. You can't really change that. You're just playing each other. So I think that's an issue that we're seeing. Um, I think, though, it's just hard to win on the road. Like, if you look at the home records with the top six, seven, eight teams in our league, everyone's winning at home. And the only thing that separates those top two are their ability to win on the road. And I I think that's really, you know, got Carolina in some issues. It's definitely affected us. Um, Playing on the road for us has always seemed to be hard. For whatever reason, this year there's a – an added edge to that. But, um, you know, we, we've at least beat the teams that I felt like we were supposed to beat. And going into the season, I kind of looked at it and I was like, okay, you know, we can't lose at Boston College, right? You got to beat Georgia Tech down in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, you don't want to obviously drop a home game to Notre Dame or Louisville. And we've done that. We've taken care of the games that we were supposed to. And the ones that we lost outside of state and Wake, I mean, we're, we're right in Miami, of course, but we're right there. You know, we're, we're right there in it. Uh, get a few bounces. You know, this team could be sitting here at like 24 and 4 or 24 and 23 and 5 or something and would really flip the perception, the national perception, I think, of, of the team. Yeah, just three road wins so far for Duke. They're going to need one more, of course, uh, when they take on North Carolina next weekend. 
I totally had forgotten about that Georgia Tech game, by the way. One of those three road wins for Duke. Duke wins by 40-plus. That was a fun Saturday. Double them up. Double them up. If we could have one of those Saturdays tomorrow, I think we would all sign up for that, man. No stress. Get the job done like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hasn't been many of them this year. No, not at all. Very close games a lot of times. Not at all. Uh, We're going to need the guards to play well for Duke tomorrow uh, and going forward here in March. Tyrese Proctor's play has really been elevated. I want to get to him in a minute, but uh, the captain, Jeremy Roach, his play, playing off the ball, uh, what are your thoughts on him right now? I think he's just really kind of found himself after the kind of toe injury or whatever. was, And I'm sure there's some lingering stuff, um, but really starting with that kind of wake for us, but really saw it live against North Carolina, his ability to get to the rim and now finish. That's been something that's kind of – no doubt. Troubled him a little bit his first two years um, in the tournament. He was excellent at it last year, and I think we're starting to see just that confidence, just getting to the rim, ability to finish. I mean, you play Louisville. I think he finishes. I'm not sure exactly how many points he had, but he doesn't take a three. You know, he has six assists, just all of them right there in the lane. Um, that mid-range jumper, if he gets to that point, you might as well just count it. Like, he <laughs> lives there. He loves that area. He does, yeah. And, you know, he's finding ways. He's a smaller guard, and he's finding ways to finish. And so that's huge. That's huge. Locked on Blue Devils here today. J.J. Jackson alongside my pal Josh Smith from the Devil's Den podcast. We'll take another timeout and get set to wind things down here on the program today. Again, so thankful for our friends over at FanDuel. Make sure you are checking out that No Sweat First Bet. It is amazing. The idea that they can give you a chance to win more money than you started with. Again, that No Sweat First Bet, up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. It's safe. It's secure. It's super easy to use. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thank you again also for making Locked On Blue Devils your first listen every single day. Make sure you check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball in one place. Plus, hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Final few moments here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. JJ Jackson alongside my pal Josh Smith from the Devil's Den Podcast. Take a moment, if you will. Tell me about the show. What do you guys have out right now with the Devil's Den Podcast? Yeah, man. So we've been kind of, the way the season is, we're not a huge fan of these short turnarounds either. I'm sure you're <laughs> yeah. aware of that. Like, it's tough. give us an extra day or two to get content out. Uh, so just trying to keep up. It's crazy. I was talking to Raul, and it feels like we just got started, and the season's three games out, and we're, it, you know, it's time to kind of wrap it up. But um, yeah, we recorded last night, so we got one dropping probably tomorrow, and we're really hoping we got Brennan March on the schedule, so hoping to get him back on. He just had a big interview with Coach K. Yeah. Highly recommend y'all go check that out over at The Athletic. Um, and then it's time for tournament stuff, right? So trying to get some national guys on. We had Brian Geisinger on, and I highly recommend y'all checking out his stuff, up-and-coming writer, especially if you're like me and love the deep dives. I mean, he's breaking he's down Spain pick and sure. rolls, yeah. elevator screens, and I'm having to like go research what he's talking about. <laughs> um, but if you like getting into the weeds of what we're actually doing and the stuff that we're running, some of the stuff he's putting out there is the best I've seen. So definitely recommend checking him out and, uh, then it'll be time to do some draft talk, I guess, right? Yeah. We're, we're getting there, too. And a uh, little different conversation, I guess, this year with some guys. Maybe there's some hope that we get some of these uh, some sophomore seasons in Durham. A lot of big uh, big discussions coming up and uh, for, for players making drafts. And I'll just say a lot of great people covering the Duke Blue Devils. So many different avenues and ways for you to consume Duke basketball content, whether it is our pal, Brendan Marks of The Athletic, who was on the show here last week. Um, Steve Wiseman, Raleigh News and Observer, will join us on tomorrow's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. So a lot of ways to consume what's going on in the Duke world right now. So with that said, Virginia Tech coming up again for Duke tomorrow. And Tyrese Proctor, uh, I figured he would be one of my favorite players to watch going into the season. He is really making that easier for me the last few games, watching him perform the way he has, Josh. 
Yeah, I hate that he got off to such a bad shooting slump because it, well, it was bad. Yeah, torpedoed his numbers. You know, like if Sheesh. you just look over the last like month or two or two months, like conference play, really the last two months though, um, he's such a threat, and you can see it on the court. I mean, against Louisville, he's taking some tough contested step back threes. He's starting to shoot that three in transition with confidence, getting to the rim. Um, and his ability, I think, in the ball screen to really get into the lane and find guys has just opened things up. And, you know, I'd hope to get him back again for a sophomore season because I think he could be one of the best players in the country. Uh, but his defense probably hasn't gotten enough recognition. I mean, this dude is out there hounding guys. I thought he played Gerard really tough at Syracuse. Same. Um, you know, he's just what he's doing on both ends probably doesn't get quite enough attention. And I think it's just because of the start. You know, if he if he has a 0 for 20 slump somewhere in January, it doesn't torpedo it as much. When you start 0 for 20, you really kind of have to <laughs> do a lot to make that up. But, uh, you know, he's he's blossoming, man. Is uh, is Mark Mitchell the X factor for the Stoop team in your eyes moving forward? Or who, who mm. deserves that title? I you know, I think Mark is just going to kind of give us what he's giving. To, for me, it's Dariq. Yeah. Because he's just a guy that can completely take over a game. Um, and we don't with you. quite yeah. have a guy that can just create that shot. And we haven't seen it in a little while. He's been kind of a catch-and-shoot guy. But his ability to take guys off the dribble, his ability to hit contested shots in the lane, uh, the three-point shot we're all well aware of. <laughs> he can do it off catch, off dribble. If he gets more comfortable driving and getting his feet undering, you get some of those kind of finishes around the rim. You know, you're looking at a guy that most of us projected to be our leading scorer, and he hasn't quite found the footing. If that happens, and you can insert a confident alpha Derek Whitehead that could give you 17 to 22, that no really doubt. changes what we're doing. No doubt. Yeah. No. If if Derek can continue to shoot at the level in which he is. I'm curious what it looks like if he puts the ball on the deck a little bit more and can attack the rim. That's the one thing I thought we'd see a little bit more of, but haven't yet. I don't know at this point in the season if all of a sudden that's going to be something that appears, but man, what that would do for the versatility of this team if we were able to see Dariq attack the rim a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've seen it a little bit against Louisville, but he's not finishing. Right. right. And so now it's if you can put the two together. I love him as a ball handler in the pick and roll. Yeah. Some nice passes to flip. I mean, we could use him a little bit more, I think, as an on-ball guy. I was going to say, so he's got the he's got the injury coming into the year, right? A preseason injury. You're worried about the leaping ability. And I want to say, Josh, if memory serves correctly, he had like a highlight dunk or two, like right out of the gates. Tariq did this season and I was like, whoa, oh man, I, I think we He's might back. be in for something. <laughs> He's back. And then we just haven't seen that as much as the season progressed. Yeah. And I think the, was it Virginia Tech that he kind of injured it a little yes, bit or went it was, up? It was. Yeah. I think there's a mental aspect. And he's posted sure. a little bit and shared a little bit about that of just not trusting himself, not being able to get to the spots. We just saw it last year with AJ, um, yeah. a guy that really was still trying to find his legs. Now, AJ's injuries were a little more extreme he kind of had those back-to-back -back major injuries maybe we don't get that of Derek. um you know if nothing else though i think if we got a guy that can shoot 47 percent on catch and shoot threes that's still insanely valuable um but if he can put it on the deck become more of a facilitator a creator in that half court offense that just gives us more options duke and virginia tech tomorrow night eight eastern on espn Game being played at Cameron Indoor Stadium. My guest, Josh Smith, one of the co-hosts for the Devil's Den podcast. Josh, as always, so much fun to have you visit. We'll have to do this again sometime soon. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. Go Duke. <laughs> That's my pal, Josh Smith, joining us here on the program today. Thanks again for his conversation there. Make sure you go check out the Devil's Den podcast as well. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.